definitely time for the touchline. A very good afternoon and welcome back to the program. Nwai254, my name is Max Rwasika. Our question on our Facebook page still stands. Who are the current holders of English Premier League? title of course it's a battle of contention in the studio we are trying to uh, uh, debate on the choice of words we've used in asking the question but of course the other remains so keep talking to us join the conversation join the facebook page on official y254 uh, handle and give your responses on who do you think is the league leaders of English Premier League campaign and of course at the tail end of this particular program we're going to award you with prizes worth of airtime. Tyras Wayaki, veteran broadcaster, <laughs> is joining us on the show after missing in action. I don't know where he's been up to and of course this time round we're discussing about the return of sports and of course resumption of various local sporting activities. Kenya Premier League included Ken Andrew, my guest co-host, is still here with us. How are you veteran broadcaster? Veteran broadcaster. I've left my walking stick over there and i'm an old man now i'm happy with the way young men are running the, sh the broadcasting scene well done uh, i'm ready to be grilled by the by the robust the robust the energetic vibrant, vibrant you name it <laughs> the young man himself i will position you will start the test of time from the questions that will come from, you know, the robust fingers crossed, touch wood. I hope so. And happy birthday. Why two five four is standing for you? Yes, it's standing for. Oh goodness, man. Well done. Uh, I'm glad to have been a part of this journey. And I think let's rock and roll. I'm ready. Let's rock and roll. And of course he's ready. Taylor as well, <laughs> veteran broadcaster, joining us this particular afternoon to give his views and insights about the return of sports and among them, resumption of Kenya Premier League, which started yesterday after one month of suspension of sporting activities by President Uhuru Kenyatta, following what looked like surging numbers in COVID-19 pandemic. Ken, yeah. of course, good to see this happening. A lot yeah. of people are sort of idle, especially those who are passionate about sports, you know, just sitting comfortable yeah. in yeah. their houses 24-7 and, you know, getting tired, fatigue, yeah. you know, becoming the out of the day in terms of problem facing them, because you can't even go the yeah. national stadium yeah. at Kasarani to watch local action, right? Yeah, yeah, it was sad, especially for the sportsmen themselves. You know, I felt for them more than uh, anyone else because uh, that's where they, they earn their living from, you know, the league and uh, playing week in, week out. But uh, having four weeks out, uh, as I said before, it's, it's really bad for a sportsman, you know, having four weeks without training because group training was, was not allowed. Uh, football is a high contact sport, so they had to be kept apart. It was really hard for them. But I'm glad right now that the, we, the league has already resumed. People are playing locally and also the, the second division will resume soon. It's, uh, it should be smooth sailing from here on. Smooth sailing from uh, here on. What do you think about the resumption of sports? It was good readers when the president said that, you know, the Minister of Health and that of sports should work in hand collaboratively to put in place proper policies that will guide the resumption. And it looks like, you know, it's bearing fruits. It's happening now. Kenyan Premier League has kicked off already. To be honest, I didn't see that coming. When it came and sports, all sports was put on the lockdown list as well. Ah, that was a bit of a shocker. And I thought it was um, a bit uh, we it, of a reaction. But then again, obviously, I don't have access to the kind of information that the president had when he made that decision. So I had to respect it. But obviously, COVID had spiked. It was evident. People were dying left, right, and center. People whom you know. People, so you can't say, no, this thing, uh, fununu, fununu. No, 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 no. People whom you actually know. And people who know you. I mean, you've interacted with them. So, yes, it, I thought, OK, fine. If that's the case, then let's lock down on sports. Bit painful. It happened last year as well. It, takes its toll on the sporting fraternity, not just the players, but also the fans like us, and people who also rely on such shows to sh showcase their uh, veteran talent, to show that they're still there. And uh, they're, they're not that old. Veteran is not old. And, uh, well, you'd and, like to and, uh, that during COVID-19, uh, uh, when sports had been banned, so you, we're you were very rusty. We're, we're affected. We're all affected. Yes. Uh, but um, it had to happen. Tough, because this is an Olympic year. 
this is also a World Cup qualifier year for Harambe Stars, AFCON qualifier year for Harambe Starlets. The sports calendar is full, but I'm glad that under Ambassador Amina, we saw that the Ministry of Sports took measures to bring back sportsmen and women into the fray, fully prepared for the tough times that we're living in. The vaccinations, that was highly commendable. Uh, obviously the testing on, on mass for sportsmen and women, that's a very good thing. And I'm looking forward now to more sporting action, locally yeah. especially, because that has resumed with yeah. the FKF Premier League. And apart from that, I'm looking forward to the World Cup qualifiers for Arambe Stars, yeah. Af AFCON qualifiers for Arambe Starlets, yeah. and the Kenya Olympic team. We want to see our national anthem being played out there, our superstars uh, winning gold, silver, and bronze, but mainly gold. <laughs> <laughs> and so, just essentially participating at that topmost level. We're ready, Buana. Hey. Tyras is ready and of course donning <laughs> uh, Kenyan Jay-Z showing his patriotism uh, <laughs> for the national team around the stars. Mm. Of course, ahead of the Cup of Nations qualifier, slated for 2021. But <laughs> Kenya, I think, was already eliminated, right? No, World Cup qualifier. <laughs> World Cup qualifier slated yeah. for Qatar yeah. in 2022. So, yeah. Ken, of course, yesterday, one match on card Sharks against Homeboys, ending 1-0 in favor of yeah. Sharks. Today, four matches on cards. Which one are you keeping an eye on? Uh, I've, I've not checked the matches that are on today. Tasca KCB, yeah, yeah. FC Leopards, so yeah, I know you support FC Leopards. <laughs> Bandari against Bitcoin United, then there's another one, Peter Western Steamer and Poster Rangers. I think Tasca KCB, because both of them have, have had a really great start to the season, and uh, they are two cultured teams, two teams who have been in the, in the league for a very long time. To uh, task have a proper coach in Robert Matano, someone who I really look up to because he's been at the scene for very many years and he's he's always got the results done and that's a great match because uh, it it will be entertaining considering the quality of the two teams. There are two teams who play football, who attack, who score goals and who want to to be at the top of the league. So that's the one I'll be. But also I'll always check. I'll always have an eye on FC Lopez because you know. That's my team. Those are my boys. Dan Shikanda, chairman of FC Leopards, promised, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of, you know, rewards for the team in the event yeah. that they are, uh, they clinch the title this yeah. particular season. Houses for players. I don't know. How practical is that? Do you think that will psych up the players and give them much needed morale to win a title that has been sort of elusive for them yeah. over the years? I think that that can psych up the players, but it's never going to be easy, you know, because we don't know what other clubs are promising their players. And also, it always falls to their performances on the pitch. You can be promised everything of it, you can have everything of it, but if you don't work hard on the pitch, you won't uh, get it. Personally, I think the, with the issues they've had with coaching, uh, switching coaches, the, the guy who left, uh, Anthony again left, I, I think they'll still be a little bit far off. Tasca have a much more settled squad, have a much more settled uh, staff, backroom staff, and that will help them because no much changes going around them. One system they've had to stick and play with. Uh, and also AFC Lopards, uh, at times they, they, they look like they lack the the end product yes. to really go for the title, the, the ruthlessness to really show that we can start a season strong and finish it strong. And uh, I think they should improve on that if they want to be champions of this country for another time. A title which has really, really eluded them for very many years now. And talking yeah. about the resumption of Kenya Premier League, of mm. course, uh, one match that is on cut this particular afternoon at Raraka Grounds just uh, uh, we'll be starting in a few minutes now from we speak. Of course, team sheets are already out tasker against KCB. That will be, you know, a battle of titans because yeah. both of them chasing for the crown this particular season. Uh, Henry Major who has been in scintillating form starting for tasker while on the KCB side. Of course, there is one player who has also been so much impressive this particular season is Otanga Henry. I don't know getting into this particular duel after you know one month of not playing is there any rustiness or players are have been preparing you know silently when the league goes on a break Naturally, after suspension one would expect that there'd be a bit of rustiness uh or rust for that matter because they're not at the tempo 
they were on before the lockdown came in and shut down. They couldn't even train. Yeah. Uh, so now they're coming back. And it's like the first day at school. You, waking up is a problem after you're used to waking up at midday. Now you have to wake up at 5 or 6 a.m. These days kids wake up earlier. It's, that, that's a struggle. And then you go back to school. The bell now is your boss. Every time it rings, you have to do as it, uh, whatever you've been scheduled to do. You have to take home some homework with you when you are used to yeah. not really having homework. That's the kind of thing it is. Uh, but you see, when you love something, I would imagine these guys were training individually yeah. and focusing, being ready, f prepared to be called upon any time especially when they saw that the vaccinations had begun and they were being geared towards resumption. Now, you wouldn't be too hard on them if they are not at that high tempo they were on. But at the same time, you'd expect effort, at, at, at the very least, bare minimum. So I'm expecting them to sort of, it's a tug of war, to kind of, play but not play as good as they were playing before and then there's the weather to factor in the heavy rains have come on board obviously that means your game plans have to change to rhyme with the weather uh, slower game maybe as opposed to the faster game it was a bit dry before the lockdown talking There's about so, so many know, things the, the, the horrible weather condition heavy downpour that has been witnessed over the previous days you know we all know how sometimes horrible Roraka grounds look like and it's mm. the home ground for task fc do you think corporates ought to have used the opportunity when sports had been suspended to just ensure that the facilities are maintained and look up to standards when sports resume. Yeah, I, I, I Considering, think... Considering, you know, Tasca uh, are getting sponsored by a giant, you know, corporate in the ABL. Yeah, I think not only Ruaraka, but many other features need uh, their drainage system, the, how the, the rain drains into the soil. They need it fixed because uh, the, 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 you can't even pass the ball in some situations. The, the water gets clogged all over the pitch and it becomes heavy and uh, that really affects the coaches and the players. And also, Tasca have always ha have had this long-standing contract with the uh, EABL. It's a huge corporate in East Africa and uh, for, they should really, really revamp uh, Ruaraka grounds because uh, for a season where Tasca are going for the title, they need to have the best facilities. They need to have everything on their side for them to really go. If you want your team to be a proper title contender, you have to invest in them, in the players, in the pitches, in the coaches, and that's the only way you'll win the title. Yeah, yeah. And you know, talking about the team standings after yesterday's game, Tasca are on top of the standings, followed by Karobank Sharks, which recorded their win against Homeboys, then KCB sitting in third. So it's a battle between the one who are the current to league leaders and the one uh, sitting third on the log. Yeah, and, th and that makes it tasty because uh, the, this league is far from being far from being being won. And this game, games like this, are the ones which decide the leagues because uh, the two teams at the top are expected. One, whoever loses. Will, it will first deal a mental blow to them because they'll fear their rivals will really catch up to them. And whoever wins will now see no other obstacle because they've dealt with their closest rivals. Because I think Sharks have jumped uh, above KCB because of the game they played. If KCB can win it, they'll go back to second or first. And that makes a proper league because it is tight at the top. And that's the best thing for a league for its advertisement. Yeah. Definitely right for the league for its advertisement and hoping that you know the league organizers have done all that is required to ensure that you know there is value for the money of that fan who is expected to go to the stadium to watch the game even though right now as you speak with such in numbers of COVID fans might not be allowed to the stadium it will be placed played behind closed doors but even broadcasting on TV and marketing aspect of the game is crucial isn't it the case? Definitely and just to add on to what Ken has said. Uh, the sponsors, especially the corporate bodies like EABL that have lots and lots of money, although they've also taken a beating in COVID because <laughs> the buzz uh, had been closed uh, uh, down for the COVID lockdown period and they've just resumed business and it happened last year as well. 
Um, but even before COVID, Ruaraka should be like heaven. It should be the best stadium in the country because Tasca FC are not a new team. They've been playing at Ruaraka for years and the breweries have been sponsoring them all through those years. They should have turned that stadium into a football haven. It should be like a football mecca. It should be somewhere East Africans and Central Africans to boot would want to come and, and visit. It should be somewhere where people actually pay to go in and see for on a tour, even when there's no game, like the Theatre of Dreams, like a lot of those stadiums in England. They should have a museum with proper archiving. They should have um, a fun area where fans can go for, uh, once they're done with the tour to the museum, they can go sit down somewhere and, and enjoy the products that EABL has on offer, uh, but within a family setting so that kids are not left out as well. They are the future footballers of tomorrow. Uh, well, they are the future footballers. <laughs> Not future footballers. A bit of repetition there. Anyway, never mind. You get the point. Uh, so they go there, uh, family outing. They can enjoy Nyama Choma, proper Kenyan culture. You feel the vibe. You feel proud to be Kenyan. And that would increase their fan base. That would also increase the uh, interest in sports, especially football. So. There's a lot that needs to be done from the marketing perspective, from the footballing angle. There's, football goes on beyond the 90 minutes. In fact, most of the football is beyond the 90 minutes. So Ruaraka should be a fine example let's, let's, to let, what let's, let's, a stadium ought to be. Let's, let's not make it, make it look like you know, we're discussing about you know, the state of the facilities. But of course, it's also a critical point considering that's where football is played. Then Bidco, the newly promoted side will be taking on Bandari, the Dockers, and you know, they are playing at home at Maraki Stadium. You know, the dynamics of playing against a team that has been promoted and a team that is uh, newly an outfit in the setup, how hard it is. Yeah, it is, it is usually hard because they come with uh, new enthusiasm. They've never been here before. They want to prove themselves. But Bandari is a side that uh, for the past few years has been amongst the best in the league. They play great football. They, they produce, uh, they've produced a number of players in the past years who've gone on to represent Kenya at AFCON and uh, also in the AFCON qualifiers. And we'll see some of them in the World Cup qualifiers. And also playing at home, Baraki Stadium. Abdallah Hassan has been in good form, of course, featuring for yes. the national team around yeah, yeah. You saw how it was crucial to Jacob Gostim led during African mm. Cup of Nations campaign against Togo and even Egypt, yeah. despite the fact that they were eliminated. Yeah, yeah, you, you could see by his positioning, how he was able to get those goals during the last two qualifiers. He's a, he's a top player and all that he gets from playing at Bandari because I've always believed they are a great team. They are a top team. They've showed themselves and... Uh, you know what's helped them? It's having a place like Mbaraki where they, they'll always play there. They don't have to move venues to switch. You know, they have a place to play and they, they have a consistent squad. That's helped Bandari. So I don't think Bitco will really show people that uh, anything new. I expect Bandari to easily get that win. Western Steamer up against, you know, Poster Rangers getting played at Moy Stadium in Kisumu. Poster Rangers having parted ways with their veteran coach, Sami Pamzo Molo, who is now assistant at Gormaya, but they have a new man who is former coach for the national team, Stanley Okumbi. Do you think he will propel them to where they are supposed to be, considering the concrete sponsorship they get from Postal Corporation of Kenya? Because, you know, local teams have been struggling due to financial constraints, but these teams that get well funded by the parastatals, by the corporates, don't need to struggle on the pitch. They need to replicate the good show on the pitch, cut us off, you know, the concrete sponsorship they get. If ever there was a time when Western Steamer could actually beat Poster Rangers, it's about now. Because Poster Rangers, even though they've been quite impressive in recent years, this particular season they've not really been at their best. They've not been at their peak. They still have more to give. That's what I strongly feel. And this is one time, that one chance when Western Steamer can really make a statement by beating Poster Rangers. But that's not going to be easy. Obviously, because you don't want to lose to a team that is considered weaker to you. 
uh, so Poster Rangers are going to try and put their best foot forward. I don't really rate Stanley Okumbi that highly because he was thrust upon with the responsibility of Harambe Stars by Nick Mwendo when he came into office straight away, even before he was ripe and ready for that office. So he suffered the setbacks that come with that, psychologically. Um, he even sent me a tweet, he told me to go slow on him. Uh, I told him, no, you deserve it, man, I have to be hard on you because you, you, you bite what you, you bet actually what you could not chew. And you knew it, it's wrong. Kenya first, not nepotism first or friendship first. So anyway, he's now gone back to but, but, he's but, now but, gone back to drawing board where he can learn from down there and then come up. And I'm hoping he can be able to propel poster rangers to the lofty heights that they've sort of previously enjoyed. It's going to be a bit of a challenge against Western Steam. The dynamics of uh, football coaching at the national team and club coaching are quite different. Uh, and we've seen how that has resonated even uh, at the international scene when someone is at the helm of a national team. The performance he records, unlike when he's at the helm of club football coaching, is quite different. Fabio Capello, when at some point he was in charge of Real Madrid and mm -hmm. even he coached England at some point, the performances at both levels were not, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> level, they were not on the same page. <laughs> I don't know, Okumbi he has been at the helm of club football coaching for quite long, at some point Madara United, Karyobangi Sharks, now yeah. back at, you know, uh, post Rangers to replace Sami Pamzo Molo who left for Gore. Yeah. Do you think he can change the dwindling standards of the team that has yeah. gotten much funding from corporate? Yeah, I'll always uh, fancy a coach uh, who's at the club uh, after being at the national level because, you know, in club football, uh, the, the, the national team coach and the club coach, the club coach spends more time with the player, you know. He'll know the player much more uh, as it's different to the national who will have to come watch the player who's under another coach at that time. So uh, for him, I think when he was at Sharks uh, before he came to the to the national team, I think he was an okay coach. He was a good coach, but as he said, I think it was a step too far from him. For him, it was uh, people say that uh, he was given that role and he was just handed that role out of nowhere. And uh, I, I may believe it because. Uh, he, he was out. He was not amongst the big names at that time, you know. But for him to come back down at the at KPL level and actually try to prove himself, try to win back that uh, the, the praise he had done with Karyobangi Sharks uh, in 2016, those years, I think it's a great thing for him. He'll have more time to work on the players, work on his tactics, tactics, and improve himself also. And in even the process. before he joined Poster Rangers, um, he went a notch or two lower to one of the youth teams of the yeah. na national team yeah and he did quite well with them i told yeah. him look yeah that's where you should have begun you see i i don't just box you i also caress you a bit i tell you yeah that's it i mean that's good that's more you now you realize this was nothing personal i wasn't hitting hard i was just being fair now you're doing well uh that's the way you start from there and then you go up uh, even me, you can't say, Tiras, you've been analyzing soccer for so many years now, Coach Arambe stars. And then I take the job and not expect a backlash. Even on this show, you guys will hit me hard. You will say, Tiras, yes, we respect him. He's our friend, but um, there are question marks here and there. He's never even um, coached beyond kids. Now he's coaching guys who are playing uh, international football all of a sudden, how can he coach our national team? And now I would accept such criticism because it's founded on... And how can you surpass all these other big names, as he said? The big, there are bigger names who are expected to take up that job. And then you just get through the back door. No, that's not fair. It's not right. Of course, lastly, um, uh, a match that is about to take place later today is FC Leopards against Zoya. That looks like a derby, man. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a derby. That looks like a derby. <laughs> yeah. And you know, FC yes. Leopards, it's been several years of waiting. You know, there has been a lot of pressure being mounted on the team to emulate on their rivals Gourmet and record good performance so that they can lift the title. But it hasn't been forthcoming. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Do you think this time around it's it's... They will mm. give it a try? 
Yeah, first, not first, necessarily mm. lifting the title because yeah. it's all done and dusted. Yeah, but, but first, maybe making it top three to yeah, help them qualify to okay. uh, confederations club football. Yeah, I think first of all, I think they've had a number of derbies this season because <laughs> <laughs> played a, 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 a certain amount of teams from uh, that, that side of the country. <laughs> And also, Tima, Zoya, Kamega Homeboys, Vihiga, Vihiga United, wow. And FC Law, it's five. That's amazing. <laughs> but for FC, I think uh, they should set realistic targets. I think they should try to go for the cup because that, that can also be used as an entry into the, the Continental Championships because, uh, you know, KCB and Tasca and Karyobangi Sharks will be relent relentless right now because they'll want to go for it. You know, when a certain point of the season finds you closer to the top, you start setting other goals, you start fighting for the trophy and uh, FC Lopez is a little bit, I think they are still far from winning the title. Uh, although they have, they've, they've shown, they've had great players this season. I've seen Rupia has, has been in red hot form, but uh, I still think, I, I don't fancy them to win uh, the title, maybe third or fourth, it's for them. But I think they should really go for the cup competition and use it to go to the Confederations Cup. Yeah. And about their chairman, D uh, Dr. Danchi Kanda promising them houses if they win the league. Shikanda is my friend. We used to do this job with him on the mother station or sister station, whatever you call it, Channel 1, KBC, who are going to televise the FA Cup later tonight, the final of that, Chelsea Leicester. Uh, I think he promised them that as incentivization. He, that's a promise you make normally by Kenyan standards when you know you're not going to win the league. So you can make that promise. But it's a sort of incentivization to motivate the lads, to try and, and make them feel, man, if you actually do this, you're going to win the house. Who would not want a house, honestly, in Kenya? Mortgage-free, loan-free, any kind. So you play with the added incentive of, if we win this league somehow, rather miraculously, we'll own houses. But um, I think it was based on incentivization. He'll have a serious promise to keep if they somehow rather miraculously won the league. Task against <laughs> KCB from Roraga Grounds halftime still scoreless in that particular clash that sees the league leader Tasca FC taking on you know Karobank <laughs> KCB, which sits third on the log. Of course, Karobank Sharks are second on the 18 team standings after beating their opponents. Kakamega Omboys yesterday by one nil. Patilo Moto being man of the match in that particular game. Mm good opportunity for him to earn a call up to the national team around the stars? Yeah, especially with the juniors coming and the, the, the three games World Cup qualifiers are here, you know, every player should now play with a, with a, something in their mind uh, wanting to represent the national team because uh, Ghost Mule in the, in the past selection he showed that you, if he can leave out anyone, you know, and anyone can get called up to the squad and uh, with uh, Bandari Hassan, the guy who showed anyone who, ca who gets called up to the squad can perform. I think many people now have their hearts set on playing for the national team. So the performances for every player will, be, will have an added, uh, added incentive. They, they want to play for the national team. And it will be quite interesting to see how Jacob Gostimle will approach the national team selection of players, considering you know, the competition, the budding you know, players are giving the heavyweights, the experience, especially in the midfield. We have Kenneth Muguna, Abdallah Hassan, you know, yeah. Lawrence Juma from yeah. Sofapaka. And now, you know, the likes of Patila trying to impress after the restart of yeah. the league. What is the fate of people like, you know, the long-standing captain, Victor Mugubu Wanyama, who reliable information indicates that he might be leaving Montreal Impact for South African League in joining either Kaiser Chiefs or Orlando Pirates? I think in all fairness and due respect, the Wanyama era is over. If he is to come back, it will cause a lot of controversy that's unnecessary when you're going into a World Cup qualifier. He has done his bit, and we salute him for it. He captained us to the last Africa Cup of Nations in 2019. We did what we did and did not do what we did not do. He's had his time, to be honest. It's now time to move on to a younger crop, a new generation. And I'm glad that Gos Mule showed that he has that in mind, that vision of the lockdown issues and closure of sports may have sort of interrupted with that in, in the sense that um, he had shown a strong will to field local players and the fact that they've sort of been away for the last month, month and a half and they're now back and there's only about a month left before a World Cup qualifier 
uh, that opens the window for the other foreign based players who are left out in our last two competitive games. That was against Egypt and Togo, especially against uh, Egypt and Togo. Those two games, Mule left out quite a number of professional players. But since they out there have been playing, uh, they may just get that chance to come back on board and that will tilt the dynamics. Uh, really, the, the fact that um, this closure took place with a lockdown, that is quite disruptive, but well, it had to take place. But it means that Gos Mule now has to st sort of start from scratch. It's set him back uh, a yard or two behind. Uh, definitely, he now has to open his eyes wider and look at things from a wider scope which player who was there last time is not up to scratch, which ones have come on board and they're showing that uh, hunger, that desire. It's, it's a tough place. And remember, Ghost Mule is in India right now. He hasn't come, but he's stuck. Yes, he's, he's stuck. And of course, we praying that yeah. hopefully things will be better. You know, <laughs> international flights yeah. will be reopened, especially those coming from Kenya to India so that he can travel back and reorganize his team ahead of World Cup qualifiers. Remember, World Cup is slated to take place in Qatar 2020. In 2016, I remember interviewing Nick Mwendo when he was seeking to get elected KF president. And he said his prime target was to help the national team qualify for the World Cup in 2020. So I will be hoping to catch up with him soon to just get uh, from him the progress in terms of ensuring that comes to happen. Of course, we've been reviewing the Kenya Premier League, which restarted Saturday after one month's break. And of course, four matches on card today and tomorrow. Three games will be played. Madara United against Viga United, Gormaya will be playing host to Nairobi City Stars, then so far up against was it. We're going to take a short break. Of course, when he come back next, it will be matters international football. But before we do, Jesse Lingard <laughs> has been playing very well of late. Yesterday he was voted as the play of the month and I think he scored a goal that has been also voted as the goal of the month of yeah. April. And besides football, the man is good at cooking. How about we watch his, you know, uh, exploits in, when he's in the kitchen? <laughs> 